Well, thank you so much for tuning in again uh, for our Sunday School Hour. And uh, we're excited to be going through the life of Moses. And uh, if you think your life has been interesting, and I know that many of you have had interesting lives, uh, Moses didn't have an ordinary life. And we found out that pretty quick. Um, uh, even at his birth, there was a lot of things going on. And I think it's interesting that we started this study about the same time as our world changed a little bit. 2020 has not been the way that most of us would have thought it would go. And uh, so there was a lot of uh, change. There's a lot of uh, laws and things that are being put into place on us. And so uh, we kind of understand a little bit of what Moses' parents went through. Uh, but we're glad that you're here. We're glad that you're tuning in. And uh, looking forward to what God's going to do. I have touched base with some of you, but I'd love to hear uh, from others. And I know that uh, there are many that are just staying in right now, and that's okay. I want to say thank you to Patrick and Mary for both being here uh, live and in person for this. And uh, we do shoot this uh, live on uh, Thursday mornings at 10 o'clock. It's kind of our time right now. And uh, we'll let you know if that changes. But Thursday mornings at 10 is when we shoot it, and then at 5 or 4.45 on Sundays is when we air this. But uh, we're thankful for you. We love you. We miss seeing some of you, but completely understand uh, if you need to be cautious and careful. Uh, but we want to help you in any way that we can as well. Let's, do, let's, let's start with a word of prayer, and we'll jump right in. Father, we're so thankful for your goodness to us. Thankful that you love us. And Lord, as we jump into this study, Lord, I hope this will be a familiar passage of Scripture but, Father, also a convicting one as we look at the commandments that you've given Moses, you've given the children of Israel, but, Father, you've also given us. And, Father, as we look at this, help us to be able to apply it to our life, help us to be able to leave here better, and uh, we'll give you the praise, be with our preacher as he's away, Lord. Give him strength, give him uh, a good time, but then, Father, bring him back to us. And, Father, as we get ready to gear up a little bit, um, I know that may uh, scare people a little, but, Father, help us to be busy about um, what you've called us to do. And Lord, we'll be careful, we'll be cautious, but uh, I know that we're going to begin to do some things. And Father, we'd ask that you'd bless it. And Father, give wisdom to our leaders. We'll give you the praise for all that you'll do. Be with those that are recovering. Uh, Lord, we think about Brother Harmon Carroll from his surgery. Lord, we think about Brother Campbell and his surgery. Lord, Miss Holtzclaw as well. Uh, Father, just uh, bring these back to us. Father, help us to be successful and give them a good longer life, Lord, that they can serve you. And we'll give you the praise and the glory for all that you'll do. In Jesus' name, amen. Exodus chapter number 20 in your Bibles. Exodus chapter number 20. And uh, we're moving forward just a little bit in this study. And uh, the last time that we talked, uh, Moses' uh, father-in-law came and paid him a visit and had some advice for him and began to... Uh, tell Moses that he was going to burn out. He was doing too much, and there was a better way to do some things. And there's a lot of times in our ministry where we have to reevaluate and make sure um, that we're doing things the way that we we're supposed to. And I think it's interesting that it's only at that time, it had only been about two and a half months as we get ready to look at today's lesson. Uh, we're about three months since Egypt, three months since uh, uh, the Lord delivered the Israelites from the Egyptians. And so two and a half months in, his father-in-law comes in, gives him some advice. And I love that verse that says that Moses hearkened to his father-in-law's voice. He took that advice, he took that wisdom, and he began to set up men that uh, would come around him and set up men that would help him uh, minister. And I think that's interesting that that happened, and then the Bible says that Moses was able to spend time with the Lord. A lot of times we can get so busy doing and uh, so busy serving and so busy in the ministry that we forget uh, who we're ministering for. And uh, Moses now is able to spend some time with the Lord, and he spends 40 days uh, with the Lord, and uh, the Lord gives us the Ten Commandments. And as we look at the Ten Commandments, I know this is a familiar thing, but I think it's important as we go through this study that uh, we just talk about this a little bit. And um, the Ten Commandments are things that we would say, boy, if there's anything that we should not do, it's these ten things that God was very specific, so, so specific about it that he wrote it in stone. And uh, truthfully, they should be written on our hearts as Christians. And so as we look at this today, um, most of us would say that uh, our desire is to be a good Christian. 
Our desire is to uh, serve the Lord. Our desire is to please the Lord. And one of the ways we do that is by um, following the Ten Commandments and making sure that um, we're doing the best that we can. There's a, there's a man who goes out and he interviews people on the street and um, he uses this as a witnessing tool. And so he'll go up to somebody and he'll say, do you feel like you're a good person? And most people think they are a good person. And uh, he'll begin to ask them some questions and they'll say, yes, I feel like I'm a good person. And um, then he'll begin to say, have you ever lied? And they'll stop and they'll say, well, yes. He says, well, that makes you a liar. Have you ever stolen? That makes you a thief. And they begin to go through the Ten Commandments and ask them if they've ever broken God's law. And by the time they're done with that interview, boy, uh, I'm, I'm a lying, stealing, adulterous. And they just go through this list and they say, man, uh, maybe I'm not a good person. And they'll, they'll turn that then and then begin to tell them that, hey, that's all of us. All of us would be considered not good people. The Bible says that our goodness is as filthy rags. I like the way that they use the Ten Commandments to lead people to Christ. But as we look at our study today, I want to look at verses number 20, or chapter 20, verses 1 and following. The Bible says, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of, e out of the land of Egypt and out of the houses of bondage, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. The sixth day thou shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. And in it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is with thee in the gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and the sea, and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. I'll stop right there for uh, today. So as we're looking at these, and we know these as the Ten Commandments, and uh, I was just in the church office, and there was a few people that were there, and I said, I'm going to go through these because I think it's important because as Christians, we all know about the Ten Commandments. But I think if I were to put you on the spot this morning and say, give me all ten of the Ten Commandments, we might have a hard time doing that. Because what happens is we learn this as children and then uh, we grow a little bit older and we forget. But if God wrote these in stone and God wants us to uh, know that these are the things that thou shalt not do, um, I think it's important for us to go over it. And the first one uh, that, that God gives us found there in verse number three, thou shalt have no other gods before me. As we go through this, I'm going to try to give you a way that you will uh, be able to remember these by the time we're done. And so the first one is really simple, one God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. The first of the Ten Commandments is super simple. You put up that number one and no other gods. Um, preacher right now is uh, preaching a series just called Only God. Only God. And that ought to be our heart's cry. That ought to be our theme in our life that we have but one God. And so that first commandment, uh, we hear that and we say, okay, I believe that there's only one God. Uh, but the question is, do you only have one God that you serve in your life? And as you start to look at that, there's some things that I wrote down about this. And um, this is the preamble to all other commands, the preamble to all other commands. Somebody might say this, what gives God the right to give us these commands? Number one, the position of God. 
The position of God is this. He is the Lord our God. It's found right there in our text in verse number 2. I am the Lord thy God. We first encountered the designation of God in Genesis chapter number 1 and verse 1 when the Bible says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Beyond that, God is our personal God. He is our Lord and He is our God. So we see the position of God, but then we see the provision of God right there in verse number 2 as well. This is the God which has brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, out of the slavery that you were in. For us, he's given us that, that, that freedom out of sin. And so we, say, so we look at these Ten Commandments and say, who is God to be able to say, only one God? Boy, he is the one that uh, has the position to say only one God. And he is the one that's given us the provision and uh, freed us from the sin that, that enslaved us. But then we not only see the, the preamble to all other commands, but we see the problem of the human heart. The problem of the human heart, there's a song that we sing that talks about the fact that we are prone to wander. Prone to wander. But when you think about humans and we think about our condition, I think that's probably one of the best definitions that we can give is that we are prone to wander. We get distracted. We allow things to come into our life that um, take the preeminence. And so we see the problem with the human heart is oftentimes we have other gods. Now, it might not be a God that we created. It might not be a God that we actually bow down to and we're worshiping like that. But we've allowed things to come into our life that have taken the place of God. There's some things that, uh, if we're not careful, they'll come in. And we've talked about that um, in the past where uh, our priorities change. And our priority becomes our occupation or our priority becomes our, our family or our finances. And our priority begins to uh, be something that it ought not be. And God says, just a reminder, the first commandment that I give thee. And if you'll get this one, the rest of them are just going to kind of fall suit. Serve me. I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And so when we look at the problem of the human heart, the question that I would ask this morning or this afternoon is, what have we allowed to take that place of God in our life? What have we allowed to sneak in? And there's a way that you can find this. The, the way is simply track your time, your energy, and your resource. When you track those three things, you'll find out what, what has taken the place of God. Because if we're not careful on a daily basis, we'll get up and we'll go throughout our day with not much thought about God. And God says, hey, you'll have no other gods before me. And when we get up in the morning and we can go throughout our day with really no thought of God, no thanking of, of, to God, uh, we go throughout our day and there's no recognition of the God who has provided for us, the God who has uh, given us the that way out of sin, the God who has the position to say only one God, if we can go through a day, if we can go through a week and really not have much thought toward God, I submit to you today that you have another God. Everybody's serving something or someone. It may be as simple as you're serving self and self has become your God. You've heard me say it over and over again. There's really only two things on the shelf. You're either serving God or serving self. And uh, if we're not careful, we begin to serve self. And everything becomes about us. And everything becomes about our desires. And everything becomes about our dreams. And everything becomes about our job and our family and our finances. And uh, it's all about what we want. It's all about uh, what am I going to do today? If you're getting up as a Christian and you're having days where you don't really have any God thoughts, if you're having days and you don't have any time in His Word, you're having days and you're not going to Him in prayer, you're having days and you're not serving Him and telling other people about Him, I submit to you that you have another God in your life. And it may not be obvious. You may not have a statue in your living room that you've made that you're bowing down to. But you're serving another God. And God says, if you'll get this one, 
Well, it's going to help you with all the rest. One God. You serve me. I have the position. I've given you the provision. And I'm telling you the way. The first and foremost, only one God. That'll set a pattern. The pattern that this command sets for our life. The Bible says over and over again that uh, we keep him first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. What are you seeking? The first one that we see. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. The second is kind of close to it. So remember, the first one is this, one God. No other gods before me. The second one is this, is found in verse number four. Thou shalt not make any graven images or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Verse five, thou shalt not bow thyself down before them nor serve them for I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon their children under the third and fourth generation of those that hate me. So number one, super easy to remember, the first commandment, one God. The second one, thou shalt have no graven images and bow down before them. So commandment number two, we put up both of our single fingers and uh, no other gods, no other graven images that were bowing down before. So the first one, super simple, thou shalt have no other gods before me. The second one, thou shalt not have any graven images that we're bowing down to. This is something that most of us um, don't have an issue with. Most of us don't have a problem with. Um, if there's anything close to this, I would say um, our television has become a graven image. Our television is something that uh, we're polishing and we're shining and we're making sure there's no uh, fingerprints on. And then we spend hours and hours and hours in front of it. Uh, so the Bible says here, number one, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Number two, thou shalt have no graven images that you're bowing down to. Number three, it's found in verse number seven. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. This is an interesting one here because uh, we live in a, a world where you'll hear this so much. And basically what that, that verse is saying is uh, anytime that we use the word God, anytime that we use the word Lord, anytime that we use the word Jesus, anytime that we use a word that's referring to the deity um, and we use it, not in a way that's giving them honor and glory. We use it in a, a, a way that's kind of flippant. And uh, we all have heard this before. We all know that this is something that um, is very rampant. It's uh, something that even in our Christian circles, you'll see this. And um, somebody will use OMG. Um, OMG is a, 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 an acronym, and they, they use that. And uh, they say, oh, my God, when um, they're not talking to God, and they're not praising God, or they're not telling someone else about God. That's taking God's name in vain. Man, if you're telling somebody about the goodness of God, the greatness of God, uh, that's, when we're, that's the way we're supposed to talk about God. We're giving Him praise and we're lifting His name up and we're telling other people about Him. That is, uh, that's acceptable, but the Bible says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. That's any time we're, we're, we're talking or saying the Lord's name without giving Him reverence, without acknowledging His position, with not, without giving him praise. Verse number 8, we see number 4. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. An easy way to remember that one is it's number 3. And number 3, uh, when you put those fingers up, um, it looks like a W. And when, when we think about W, you think about the word words, and we've got to watch our words. So number 1, no other gods before me. Number two, no graven images that we're bowing down to. Number three, our words. Well, we've got to watch our words because the Bible's very clear. How we use the Lord's name is so important. Number four, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day 
is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. And in, and in it thou shalt do no work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that it was in thee. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. And so as we look at this one, we see the Sabbath day. And the Sabbath day here is something that we would look at as our Sunday now. Um, that's a day where we rest. That's a day where we're not out working. That's a day where we um, come and we worship the Lord and uh, we gather together to be encouraged, to be convicted, to be instructed um, in the Word of God. And so uh, the Sabbath day here is important. And I love the example that God gives from the beginning of time on that seventh day of creation. The Bible says He created everything in six literal days and on the seventh day He rested. We look at that, and that's not something that um, we really talk about a lot. That word Sabbath is even probably a little bit strange to a lot of people, but this would have been their Saturday. This would have been their Saturday. This was their Sabbath. Um, when they would go out in the morning on that sixth day, they would have to get enough manna for that sixth and that seventh day because there would be no labor on the seventh day. There was going to be rest. And if you go back and re begin to read chapter 19, they, uh, they did this with their fields. They did this uh, uh, with their slaves. Uh, after six years, the field would sit for, one, for, for a whole year. Uh, the seventh year, the field would rest. The slave would be freed. Um, there, was, there, there was something that the Lord is teaching here as we go through and we see this, uh, this Sabbath day. Then number, verse number 12, the Bible says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the earth. The land which the Lord thy God hath given thee. So as we look at number five, number five is easy to remember. Uh, honor thy father and thy mother. Well, we give honor, we give respect to our father and our mother, and this is something that uh, we try to teach our children at a young age. We try to tell them and let them know that um, it's one of the Ten Commandments. He put it on our relationship with our parents. But then it doesn't just say that we should honor our father and mother. There's a promise there as well. If you honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land, which the Lord thy God Give it thee. I was at a youth conference once and the pastor was up and he was preaching and he had a calendar with him. He had a calendar with him and he was preaching about this verse and he was preaching to young people. And um, I want you to know that this verse doesn't just speak to young people. A lot of times when we hear that verse, honor thy father and thy mother, we would automatically think that this was geared for children. But I still have a mother. My father's in heaven. But if you still have a father, if you still have a mother that are living, the Bible says, honor thy father and thy mother. They will be your father and mother until uh, they go or you go. And so the Bible says, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the, the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And he began to tell those teenagers, he said, um, how long do you want your life to be? I don't know how long your life's going to be, but I can say this, when you disrespect and you do not honor your father and your mother, and he started ripping pages out of that calendar. Because that's a promise from God's word. And oftentimes when I hear of somebody who has had a long life, I hear of somebody who's um, up in age, boy, I think, I bet they honored their father and their mother. Because that's a Bible principle. That's a Bible command. It's a promise that's given right here in these Ten Commandments. Um, as we look at these Ten Commandments, I hope this will be a help to you uh, because this is something that's super important. It's something that even as a Christian, a lot of times uh, we want to do these things. We know that we're not supposed to, um, to uh, disrespect our parents. We know we're not supposed to take the Lord's uh, name in vain. We're not supposed to have idols. We're only supposed to have one God. But if we're not careful, we allow things to creep into our life. So the Bible says we've got to examine ourselves. We ought to examine ourselves because things will creep into our life and God won't have the right place in our life. And we can go day after day after day 
and not have any thought toward God, His Word, His will, His work. And God reminds us here, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make any idols that you bow down to. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. You've got to watch your words. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor thy father and thy mother, that, it may, that the days of your life may be long. We're going to go over the next five of these and then continue on um, next week in our, in our lesson. Um, but I want you to really just think about that first one because if we can get that first commandment right, have no other gods before me. When God becomes the center of our life, I just had the privilege to preach down in Brandon last week and I just talked about uh, the fact that Paul had Jesus Christ as the center of his life. He said, for me... To live is Christ. And all of us can fill in that blank. For me to live is, what do you get excited about? What are you living for? What, what drives you? For the Apostle Paul, it was Christ. For me to live is Christ. For me to live is Christ. The only point for me to be here and to be alive is Jesus Christ. His work and His way and His will. That's what we're still here for. The minute we get saved, we don't automatically rapture out of here. The Bible says that we've got some work to do. And Paul had a desire to go be with the Lord, but he had a duty to stay here. And he did a really good job of just saying, Christ is going to be the center of my life. One God. He's going to have the right position in my life. And when God has the right position in your life, He'll begin to give you the power that you need to be effective in His work. Father, we're so thankful for Your Word. We're thankful for the fact that You love us, You care for us. Lord, here in this passage, Lord, You remind us that we really need to just examine our life because other gods come in. They sneak into our life, and they may seem good. It may seem like they're not terrible things, but, Father, if they replace you, Lord, they're another God. And, Father, we ask that you would help us, Lord, when it comes to these Ten Commandments. Lord, help us to make sure that we're not um, worshiping and uh, having other gods. Make sure that we're not taking your name in vain. Lord, we could have really stayed on that longer. Good people who are talking about you but not in the way that they should. Using your name flippantly. Father, help us, Lord, to remember that day of rest, to keep it holy. Father, help us to be in your house and worship. And Lord, Father, help us to honor our father and mother for as long as you give them to us. And we'll give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. The 6 o'clock service will be in just a few moments, and that'll be live. Uh, we look forward to seeing you some. Uh, some of you in the next few days, uh, but we understand if you're not coming out, but please let us know if we can do anything for you. We want to be a help to you in any way that we can. I want to challenge you. We have but one God. I want you to examine your life and say, what is it that I'm worshiping? For me to live is what? If you put anything else in that blank, for you to die is loss. That's a powerful statement. Paul was able to say, for me to live is Christ, therefore to die is gain. If we're living for the wrong things, well, we better be careful because someday we'll die and we'll stand before the Lord. We look forward to seeing you soon. Please let us know what we can do for you. God bless you. We'll see you next time.